Well, good evening, good evening, good evening, Christ Lutheran Church. This is yours truly, Vicar John Vower. Just coming to you this evening with our live uh, devotion, with our uh, midweek Lent devotion for this evening. And um, I'm excited that you can join this evening for our time of devotion. Uh, this should be a really amazing time because we have a really uh, special devotion for you tonight. So uh, come on in, come on in and uh, uh, tell somebody that we're online now and that uh, we're sharing and uh, we would like, we're excited to have you uh, join us tonight. Uh, God bless you again. My name is John Vower and I'd like to welcome you to our midweek Lent devotional midweek lent devotional for today wednesday march 16 2022 and i'm excited about this uh particular uh devotion today because it's uh it it really as i was reading through it and, and getting ready for uh this evening it really warmed my heart it really blessed me and i'm just excited to share it with you uh so god bless but let's let's jump right in while we're waiting for others to join uh, our Lent devotion uh, for today, Wednesday, March 16, 2022, comes from uh, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 17, uh, verses 11 to 14. That's Gospel of Luke 17, 11 through 14. And uh, I hope you can hear me loud and clear. Um, I'm just going to read. Uh, this this passage in your hearing and then we'll jump right in and talk about it and just uh, uh, talk about what uh, God is saying to us tonight All right on the way to Jerusalem he was passing along between Samaria and Galilee and this is speaking of Jesus and as he entered a village he was met by ten lepers who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices saying Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priest. As they went, they were cleansed. As they went, they were cleansed or they were healed. Another translation will say, read it one more time. And the title of uh, tonight's devotional is Good News. Good News. On the way to Jerusalem, he was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. Uh, I wonder sometimes about the priest, is what our devotion uh, says here. Uh, the, the ones Jesus sent, the people he healed to visit. Uh, because according to uh, Leviticus, the book of Leviticus chapter 13, according to uh, the law in those days, it was customary in, uh, in Jewish culture for someone who was uh, sick with leprosy to uh, go and show himself to the priest if he thought he was healed or if a great healer was in town and had um, uh, declared that person healed or by some means uh, uh, had, had washed them in ritualistic washing or whatever the case may have been and had declared them healed, the only way you could be completely uh, declared completely healed is you had to go to the priest for the priest to examine you so the priest was sort of uh, uh, in those days the one who would examine you uh, to determine whether uh, or not you still had leprosy and uh, <laughs> how did they react when those people walked in it wasn't as if the priest had no idea what to do uh, as I said before in Leviticus 13 through 14, God gave the priest the responsibility to check on cases of leprosy and decide whether people were ill or not. People with leprosy will have to live as outcasts 
away from their family and their friends. Leprosy did so much harm to people in the, uh, during the Bible days. And this disease is used as a symbol of sin. That's how harmful leprosy was, that it is likened to sin. Why is it likened to sin? Because sin, we know, separates us from God. And in the same way, uh, leprosy separated someone from his family and from his friends. If a person recovered, the priest could certify the recovery and send him or her home free. The healed person would wash and offer a sacrifice and then be free to return to normal life, healthy, happy, clean. But I doubt that happened very often. Leprosy was incurable uh, before the discovery of, of normal drugs, as we know, of modern medicine. And uh, for the priest, leprosy meant delivering bad news again and again and again. That means each time someone uh, sick with leprosy will come into the priest to be examined and for the priest to uh, declare or uh, pronounce this person healed and free. Uh, how often did that per the people coming in get bad news because there was no cure for leprosy? It was, it was bad news, but not today. Today, the priest could give them good news. Jesus has made you well, they could say. It's the same thing any Christian can say. Through his sacrificial death on the cross, Jesus makes you well from sin. Wash in the waters of baptism and be clean. Because of Jesus, you have your life back again. Everlasting life. Jesus' gift to you. The reason I like this is because it goes from bad news to good news. The bad news is that you are separated. Imagine someone with leprosy in those days receiving the bad news that not only uh, you, that you had leprosy, but now you had to go and live with the lepers. You had to be separated from your friends and your family. That was bad news. And then coming, thinking, you know what, this doesn't look so bad. Maybe it's time for me to go in and, uh, and see if the, the priest will certify that I'm, I'm actually healed, you know, and to go in and to get the bad news. No. You're not. You have to go back to the field to go and be with the lepers again and again. But on this particular day, there were a group of lepers who cried out to Jesus and they said, because they recognized him. In fact, they used, they said, master, healer, teacher. They knew something about Jesus. Perhaps they had heard of his great works, of his great deeds of healing that was taking place all over. And they, they recognized him, they knew who he was. And they said, Master Jesus, please heal us. And if you notice, Jesus didn't just, he didn't pronounce healing upon them right away. He didn't say, be healed or uh, pick up your bed or, you know, like you would see in other places, he would say uh, to other people where he would directly pronounce healing. He said, go show yourself to the priest. Now, if you're a leper in this instance and you've been going through this for some years, you're separated and you know this is the healer and you know he has the power to heal you. You know he can heal you on the spot if he wills it. You know he can heal you right there and then with the snap of a finger, the blink of an eye, with just one word. He can heal you. But instead he says, go and show yourself to the priest. Imagine that. Imagine, I imagine a few of them may have been discouraged, but they obeyed and they went anyway. And the scripture says that as they went, they were healed. May I declare unto you today, beloved, that sometimes healing is a process. Sometimes that thing you're believing God and asking God for and you've been praying about your entire life, or maybe it's something you've been praying about recently, and you're saying, God, hear me, hear my cry. 
And sometimes God will give you an instruction. And that instruction may seem silly. It may seem like, well, God, I have a relationship with you. Why don't you just speak to me directly? Why don't you just... And God will say, no, I need you to do this, this, and that, or the other. Sometimes he, it may be a process. And these lepers, I can imagine, were thinking... A lot of things, perhaps all kinds of things were going through their minds like, why this process? You know, why didn't he just pronounce healing right there and then? But yet they obeyed. And because of their obedience, the scriptures say, as they went, they were cleansed. And imagine that day when they went before the priest. I mean, look, at, imagine the look, of, the, the look on, the, on the face of the priest to see a leper that he could actually pronounce as cleansed, as healed. Good news. And the good news, like if you, if you compare leprosy to sin, this is what sin did. Sin separated us, or sin separates us from God. Sin created a chasm. It put a gulf between us and God. But because of Jesus, because of the resurrection, because of his finished work on the cross, we're cleansed, we're healed, we're reconciled with God because of something He did, not because of what we did. Because of something He did. And so as you meditate on this word today, I invite you to join me in prayer. And join me in thanking God for Jesus Christ, for the gift of Jesus Christ, for the power of resurrection, for what he did to bring us good news, to bring us healing, to bring us transformation, to bring us reconciliation. Amen. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this day. I thank you for each person who is watching right now and those who will even see this later. I thank you, Lord, for the good news of Jesus Christ, the good news that is Jesus Christ. The reason why his good news is because of the life he lived and the blood he shed. And because of the resurrection, we have forgiveness of sins. That's the good news. The good news is that our sins are forgiven because of the actions of Jesus. The good news is that we are reconciled with God. We're no longer separated from a God who loves us because of the actions of Jesus. And so I thank you, Lord, that you've brought good news to your people today, that you've brought good news of glad tidings because of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I'm just gonna leave you with a few questions, just a few things to think about and to meditate upon. Uh, the first question I have for you is, and I think we sort of dealt with it here during the devotion, I answered it a little bit, is what do you think the healed people did first? First of all, after seeing the priest, okay? What do you think the healed people did first of all after seeing the priest? Uh, as we said earlier in those days, if you had leprosy and you thought you were clean or some healer was in town that pronounced healing upon you or uh, perform some ritual that was supposed to heal you, the custom or the law was that you were to go and show yourself to the priest. And the priest was to examine you. And the priest then could certify or authenticate your healing, that you were actually healed. And how often people will appear before the priest and be disappointed, you know, because unless uh, an actual miracle took place, a real miracle happened in those days. Leprosy had no cure. Uh, not until the invention of modern medicine. Um, and so the question is, what do you think healed people uh, did first of all after seeing the priest? Uh, if you were actually healed and you saw the priest and you were certified healed, uh, in the case of the lepers that Jesus healed, uh, what do you think they did? Did they go home? Did they go shouting in the streets? Did they, uh, you, you know, did they leap for joy? I mean, what 
what would be the first thing you would do? I know the first thing I would do. I would let the world know. I would let the world know what Jesus has done and what he continues to do and who he is. Amen. Okay. In what ways does sin resemble a disease? And in asking this question, the thing I want you uh, to think about here is that when you hear the word disease, it's actually a compound word. Dis, if you put a hyphen between D-I-S or between S and E, you have dis-ease, right? It's a dis-ease, uh, disease. So in what ways does sin resemble disease, all right, a, a, a sickness, uh, the, uh, something that separates you from God? And then the last question for you uh, to meditate upon and to wrestle with is, uh, think about a time when Jesus brought healing to some aspect of your life. Think about a time when Jesus brought healing and how did you feel, the joy that you felt. Um, and just meditate on that as you uh, uh, meditate on this week's devotion and as we thank God for the good news of Jesus Christ. God bless you uh, for watching tonight and uh, look forward to seeing you on Sunday. Thank you.